Welcome to In Harlem. I'm Gerald Schultz, and I'm here today with Alexandra Rizzio of Start Small, Think Big. Did I do that right? You did it right. Yeah, Thanks. you can just call me Alex. Though, okay, so. Alex, thank you. <laughs> um, explain what is Start Small, Think Big. Start Small, Think Big is a nonprofit organization located in the South Bronx. Uh, we work with low to moderate income small business owners or people who want to become small business owners. We offer a variety of free services, so legal services, um, business counseling services, and financial services. So really a holistic suite of everything that a small business owner would need in order to get up and running. For a small business, what is considered a small business? Um, it's, it really is a range. So anybody from somebody who is, you know, working in their home and, um, you know, create knitting sweaters and selling them online mm -hmm. to someone who is running a successful restaurant uh, to someone who is a consultant and does web design, it really you know runs the gamut. And New York is the place for small business, so yeah. you get a sense you know just walking the streets, all the different types of businesses out there: bodegas, restaurants, bars, bookstores, um, salons. It's it's really anything. Could you give me an example of a business that a business that you might have helped? A yeah. small business? Yeah, so um, like I said, we have all variety of small business owners. Um, we often work with businesses who are looking to open up a storefront. So for example, um, we'll work with a restaurant owner um, and do everything for her from, uh, you know, create her legal entity. So forming like an LLC or a corporation so that she can get formalized, um, helping her, you know, enter into certain contracts with the vendors, review her commercial lease so that she knows what she's getting into, how much she's going to pay every month. Um, and then on the business counseling side, we would assist her in maybe taking out a loan, preparing to take out a loan, packaging, that kind of thing, getting her personal finances in order so that she's ready to take the leap um, and actually, you know, open the business, mm -hmm. um, connecting her with resources f in terms of licensing. You know, you got to make sure that you have your food handler certificate, that you have all your posters up in your restaurant like you should, that you know how much to pay your workers and what kind of posters you have to have up in your restaurant, uh, alerting everybody to, you know, their rights as employees. It's really, it's a lot of work to open a small business, but with a resource like Start Small, Think Big, um, you know, we're here offering our services for free to help guide people through all of the complications that come with opening a business. A key word was free. It is, yeah, it, free is a key word, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, it's all free. So uh, I'm an attorney and I do all of my service, I'm employed by Start Small um, and we provide all of our legal services for free. I also manage our pro bono legal program. So if I'm not working on something in-house, I will refer it to a network of pro bono attorneys. Um, pro so bono, what does pro bono mean? Free. Okay. It means, just it just means sure, free. Yeah. yeah, so uh, we have a network of 14, now 14 law firms that we work with in New York City. Um, these are, you know, big corporate lawyers who usually charge a lot of money for their clients, but mm -hmm. for our clients, uh, they do their work for free. And same with our business counseling, financial counseling services. It's all, you know, pro bono. How did uh, Start Small, Think Big, develop How, whose idea do you the yes. history of it yeah so our executive director jenny de silva uh worked in the south bronx after she graduated from college um she ended up going to law school um you know had a few different legal jobs after graduation and really came back to the idea that a lot of families specifically in the south bronx but all over new york city um struggle they have trouble retaining assets, building, you know, so a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck um, or not even paycheck to paycheck, um, you know, and so she was thinking what out the, you know, what can people utilize to help them stop living paycheck to paycheck, start saving, start, you know, creating assets for themselves that they can transfer you know, ultimately maybe they can, you know, how can they generate income for themselves and their families and at the same time benefit their community. Um, and she realized that there are really no services out there um, that combine everything that Start Small now does. So she formed Start Small Think Big um, as a nonprofit organization. Um, we originally focused on 
legal services for small businesses, uh, also some consumer debt, you know, consumer debt work, financial empowerment work. Um, and now we kind of provide this holistic suite of services to entrepreneurs who want to get started. And it really does, you know, the work that we do, the goal is not only to provide, um, you know, allow people who want to grow something for themselves and their families, but who also want to contribute to their community. They know what the needs of their community are. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need, um, you know, do we need another uh, big corporate supermarket move into the neighborhood or do we need someone that knows the tastes of the neighborhood, that knows, you know, what his neighbors want? Um, that's the kind of business that we're trying to promote. That's wonderful. Yeah. That really is. I think that's a great idea. I think it's well deserved for mm -hmm. any neighborhood to have their people develop and build a business within their neighborhood. Yeah. It's very, it's very good. It's, it's uh, important to have to make sure that you know, development, neighborhood development is from the ground up, that the people in the neighborhood have a say in, you know, what shows up on their corner, yeah. um, that the people who've lived there for their whole lives can have a stake in, you know, in their space, and that that stake actually helps them provide for themselves. Yeah, it's kind of the, the problem that they have in Harlem right now. Yeah. The big businesses are moving in, mm -hmm. and the Bronx is not... Uh, hasn't been conquered yet, but they're starting to move into Starting to, lower. it's it's starting to. I mean, you know, we've had clients displaced by, you know, when their lease is up, their mm -hmm. landlord has um, opted not to renew their lease because there's a, a big name brand chain moving in. And, you know, the landlord figures they can get more money out of that than, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a collection of small business owners. So we see the effects all over Harlem, the Bronx, yes. Brooklyn, you know, so I, I, I just wanted to say that this is not criminal services, it's only business. It's not, sorry? Criminal. No, it's not, it's not criminal. Um, you know, we, in terms of legal services, it's um, what's termed civil legal services. And specifically, um, the legal program focuses on transactional legal services. So those are things like commercial leases, developing contracts, creating a business entity and structuring that business entity in a way that protects the business owner. Um, we do some employment law um, and also intellectual property. So things like trademark, copyright, um, you know, trade secrets, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so if, if anybody needs um, you know, criminal services, we're happy to, to refer them. Okay, so yeah. let's do a little bit about trademark, copyright, okay. patent, <laughs> and trade secret. Um, could you tell me a little bit of, about the difference between a trademark and a uh, copyright? Yeah, um, so okay. this is a, <laughs> you're really putting me on the spot here. Yeah, no, I don't want to <laughs> lie, I don't want to lie. Just, what do yeah, you use so what for? Um, I know so a, a trademark is, is very generally, it's a property interest in a particular word or a logo, something that um, allows consumers to identify um, between brands, basically. Google. So. Uh, made Google a is, yeah, probably a, pr they probably have a trademark on that name. And um, so it allows you to kind of stake a claim mm -hmm. um, in the, you know, word, logo, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, and if someone, you know, uses, assuming that you've registered mm -hmm. your trademark, um, if someone else is using that word uh, in a confusing way, you can alert that other person and ask them to, to stop or even you know, sue them for infringement. So that's after a word you see the little circle with the TM in it, standing uh, for trademark. Well, so that's, that's um, you would need a, a yeah, so that's one example. If they've actually registered it, you'd mm -hmm. get a, the R with a circle. So okay. registered trademark or the TM. Okay. Yeah, so what, that's a good oh, way to... Okay, what about a patent? What is a patent used so for? So a, a patent is to um, protect an invention. So a new novel invention, um, you know, that someone has developed, you would have to uh, go through a kind of lengthy process with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office mm -hmm. to describe exactly what your invention is, what it does, um, and then the, the patent or trademark office can um, decide whether to grant you that patent. Mm -hmm. And that similarly, um, for a certain number of years, gives you uh, an ownership interest in that particular invention, which you can then, you know, license out to others as a way to, you know, generate income, or you can utilize it, you know, in a product of your own that you market and sell. What about a trade secret? What is... So a trade secret is something that, um, you know, you want to keep secret. So a really good example is the KFC original recipe. Mm -hmm. You know, no one knows what, what exactly is in it. Um, <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's something that you would need to, um, you know, ways that you would protect it are, 
um, you know, making sure that no one knows about it. So being yeah. really serious. I think, I don't know, maybe KFC, only one or two people know the full recipe, something like that. So you have to, there are certain steps that you can take. Um, having people sign confidentiality agreements or non-disclosure agreements to ensure that your secret is protected. Um, and then if someone divulges that secret, you can go after them for that, you know, mm -hmm. through a lawsuit. So it seems to me that before you get into business, you mm -hmm. should have legal protection. That's what Absolutely, yeah, and there are many different kinds of legal protections. So it's not just, obviously, not just intellectual property. Um, if you are uh, concerned about your brand, protecting your, your brand identity, um, intellectual property is uh, a very important element um, for any business owner that's getting started. Mm -hmm. um, other important elements are simply structuring the business. Um, you know, do you want to operate as a sole proprietor? Um, which, you know, there's basically no separation between the business owner and the business itself. Or do you want to form an actual legal structure, like a corporation or an LLC, to give a few examples? Um, those, you know, if they're, um, you know, operating correctly, can provide um, kind of a shield, what's called limited liability, between the business owner and the business itself. So just structuring that business. Um, when you say structure, mm -hmm. you mean separating your cash mm -hmm. from the business's cash? Not just, not just separating. You do need to separate. If you are going to create a legal structure, um, you do need to separate your, your accounts, your assets, um, so that your personal assets are very separate from your business assets. But in terms of structuring, I just mean setting up an actual legal entity, filing the paperwork, um, and then uh, filing the paperwork with the state you know, where you register your business, and then making sure that you maintain uh, and that you're, you know, going forward with, a, with any legally required formalities. Okay. So a lot of people think that, you know, they, they set up, a, they send in their paperwork to the state for their corporation, they're done, they're not done. They need to make sure there are other additional requirements that they should uh, check in on. Mm -hmm. what do you, when you say the word asset, mm -hmm. asset is also money and mm -hmm. equipment. Money, yeah, it's, it's a lot of different things. So it's um, money in the bank, um, you know, your savings account, your checking account. It's equipment that you've purchased um, for, the, for the purposes of the business. Um, it's uh, knowledge that you have, that can be an, that can be an asset. Oh. Um, but when we're talking about, you know, financial assets, what you can liquidate, you know, for, to, to turn into money, it is, you know, tends to be like tangible things, like equipment or actual cash. Is there any rule to taking a loan so there's a lot, you know, there are a lot of um, kind of different ways to approach uh, taking out a loan. Um, we have a business counselor on staff who can assist um, business owners with kind of ensuring that they're ready to apply for a loan. Um, so, you know, occasionally it, it just depends on the type of loan and, and who your lender is. Um, it's going to, that's going to affect the steps that you need to take. Um, and, and really where, t who to approach for the loan. How much do you need? Um, what are you gonna use it for? W how do you want the repayment to work? There are a lot of different options out there um, and we can kind of help you navigate all of those. Okay, let's take a little break here. Okay. And let me ask you, um, how does one reach Start Small, Think Big? Well, the easiest way is to go on our website, which is www.startsmallthinkbig.org. Um, that has all of our contact information, our address, our, uh, our phone numbers, email addresses. Um, you can find some bios of our staff. Um, it's a, I think it's a really pretty website, easy to navigate. So www.startsmallthinkbig.org. And you're located in the Bronx. Yep, but it has nothing to do with uh, geographical location, your mm -hmm. services. It's just that that's your location. So we serve any business owner or resident of the five boroughs of New York City. Um, our office is located in Hunts Point in the Bronx. I just um, want to, one second, mm -hmm. say that again, the five boroughs. The five We're boroughs. We're not talking upstate, so just. No, no. So unfortunately, we, we are not able to assist um, business owners in, say, Westchester or Jersey. Um, it's, you know, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island. Okay. Yeah. And um, what are some of the things that you find interesting? that you as, a, and as an attorney, yeah. I mean like the clients, the people, what do you? Oh yeah, I mean I just get to work with so many different people and I get to see how creative like me. the city <laughs> is, like yeah, like you. <laughs> uh, I get to see how creative people in the city are. Um, it's, really, it's really fascinating and, and interesting to see you know, the different ways 
that you know people decide they want to you know approach business and just approach their lives some people that i work with are in really difficult financial situations um, but they are going to make the best of their knowledge the resources that they have available to them they really create something out of nothing so to me that's really interesting. Okay, so when a person comes to you, they mm -hmm. do have to give up some of their personal information. Yeah, um, you know, we ask for general information like what your business is, um, you know, what's your name, where do you live? These are, it's general information um, at first to just figure out who you are, what you're looking for. Um, if you wanna dive into, you know, really, um, discrete issues of business counseling, financial counseling, you know, it is helpful to reveal that kind of thing to start small staff members. Everything's confidential, um, so we would never divulge that unless, you know, the client gave us permission. Um, but just so that we have a holistic sense of what the client, what the client wants and, you know, what they need, um, yeah, we'll have, you know, frank, open conversations. Is some of this uh, information as uh, when they apply, mm -hmm. they apply on the website. Yeah, so, so they would. Th there, if you go to our website www.startsmallthinkbig.org, on the top right-hand corner, there is a little tab that says "Apply for Assistance." If they click that link, um, it will lead them to an online form, and they can fill out that form. Um, you know, with the information that we just talked about, so that we can, you know, from the outset, get a sense of who they are, what their business is or is going to be, and what services they need. And then we can kind of direct them to the right Start Small staff member based on that. I know that you said that you uh, deal with law firms. Mm -hmm. um, what about other not-for-profit or for-profit mm -hmm. organizations? <laughs> Um, so we have relationships not only with law firms, but we have worked, for example, um, with banks. Um, you know, they have provided, you know, counseling to our clients. Um, bankers will meet with our clients just to give them, you know, general information about how to, you know, um, package a loan, what they need to, what steps they need to take in order to get a loan. Um, we've worked with um, other well-known organizations to do things like um, a business pitch competition um, where clients would come in, tell us about their business, tell us, you know, what their plans are, and then, they, you know, our, our guests, our guest judges um, would, would uh, rate their performance. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, you know, we, th we come up with fun, interesting ways to connect clients with other service providers um, to help them get the skills and the resources that they need to really grow the business and go in the direction that they want to go. And events. Mm. Do you do little events? We do, yeah, we do a lot of events. Um, so on our website, we have an events page. So if anybody is um, looking for a workshop, um, a seminar, we, uh, you know, several times a month, we will hold uh, a variety of workshops and seminars in a variety of locations. So they're not all in the Bronx. Some of them are at our office in the Bronx, but some of them are at partner nonprofits, um, like small business development centers um, or business solutions locations. So um, we have a, an event coming up. Um, you know, we have uh, how to write a business plan, um, how to pitch a business. Um, we do often legal workshops, like what to look for in a commercial lease or what legal structure should you choose. So if you just stay tuned on our website, um, you'll see a lot of, of different opportunities to, to really learn. Okay, great. Um, what is the background of your staff and it's yourself? Like? Oh, well, so it's, we have a very diverse, uh, very diverse staff with a lot of you know, different backgrounds. Um, I went to law school, I'm an attorney, so I going to law school knew that I wanted to be in public service. So I did a lot of international human rights work um, and a lot of uh, kind of domestic public interest work in the civil legal field. So things like housing rights, um, family law for, for low income people, um, work with domestic violence survivors, um, immigration work, that kind of thing. Um, and I was really lucky to land at Start Small Think Big um, to pursue economic empowerment work. So that's, that's my story, but we have people who are um, financial counselors, people who own small business, um, small businesses themselves, people who are trained in working with business owners um, so that they can really develop their skills and achieve what they want to achieve. So 
um, you can check out check us all out on our website. We have staff bios up mm -hmm. there. So yeah. Yeah, I, I was uh, at your place, and I was really, I really loved it. It was a yeah. nice open space. Yeah, we try to be welcoming, inviting. We want it to be a place where people can tell us. I mean, really, when you're talking about starting a business, you're talking about hopes and dreams. Um, so we want people to feel like they can tell us, you know, what they want to accomplish. And that's, I think, you know, I think we're friendly people, and I think our, our <laughs> office is a nice place to visit. So, yeah, we'd love, we'd love to see people <laughs> at our office, so everybody go on the website <laughs> yeah so um, what is the, what is the next thing for start small think big is there a future plan <coughs> you're gonna expand well what? so we are um, starting up a relatively new program it's called the entrepreneurial the entrepreneurial pipeline program that is a mouthful uh, it's abbreviated EPP yeah. yeah so we're gonna go with EPP um, so that is a new program um, that's really a, uh, a guided pipeline for small business owners who are already operating in some capacity and who are poised for growth. So um, business owners who believe that in the next few years they're really ready to take the next step, devote themselves to their business, expand, you know, add staff, um, hire more people, maybe move to a new market. Um, so this program is going to be kind of like a guided track for them um, in terms of classes, targeted assistance in business planning, um, targeted legal assistance as well. So we really hope to, it's, it's just what it sounds like, the pipeline, it's just what it sounds like. We're going to kind of funnel people through an intensive program. And the goal of it is you know, for those entrepreneurs who are ready um, to take advantage of it, um, to see a lot of growth. I noticed that you, you, you guys said something about uh, business performance and the goals. Like, do you structure things so you can take step one, step two, step three? Do you watch them oh yeah. as they mm -hmm. grow their business? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's, it is growing a business. I think a lot of people dive into it. You know, people who are entrepreneurial um, believe in themselves and they, and they can dive into things. Um, oftentimes, it makes a lot of sense, though, to think of things in a stepwise process. So... What's step one? What's you know step fifteen? What's step eighty two? You gotta you know you gotta plan this stuff out um, so that you know how much money you need, so that you know how much staff you're gonna have to hire. This is where business planning comes in, um, and you know as an attorney, I try to think of things <laughs> you know in a stepwise process because yeah. I like to make sure that everybody knows where they are and they know where they're going. So really having a roadmap for development and success is important. Is there a common mistake? Like what are some of the pitfalls that somebody could fall into? There are a lot, um, you know, so, and I, I'll speak specifically to legal pitfalls, but I think a lot of people, for example, um, I mean, we'll start just with business formation. A lot of people will go to their, you know, their brother-in-law or their accountant down the street or their notary or something like that to have them form you know, a corporation or an LLC because they heard, you know, it's a good idea to have a corporation or an LLC for their business. That might be true, you know, for that person's business. It m maybe it's not necessary. Um, so they'll have their, say, notary file some paperwork with the state and voila, you have a corporation. Well, there are actually, you know, more steps that people need to be aware of in order to, for them to retain all of the protections and the benefits of that corporation. So just diving into something with sometimes without talking to an attorney um, can can be a pitfall in and of itself. Now it's understandable that people do that because attorneys generally cost a lot of money. Um, so for small business owners, someone who's working with not a lot to start out, it's understandable that that's how it goes. But that's where Start Small comes in. Um, we provide all our services for free. Um, so we really want people to understand um, and and you know, take targeted, you know, um, easily attainable steps by step by step so that they can grow. So if a person were watching this show right now, it would be wise for them yeah. if they haven't started a business or mm -hmm. haven't moved at all is to contact you before they do anything. That, that's my preference. I mean, I think that that's probably before you take any step that legally binds you in any way, whether it's forming a corporation, signing a contract, um, you know, signing a commercial lease, which, you know, is a form of a contract, before taking any major step like that where you're being legally bound, they should consult an attorney and we're free ones. So, you know, get in touch with me. I'm happy to help. 
I noticed that most people that start a business usually have experience in that business before yeah. they start it. Yeah. That's a good advice. I think so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some, some do, some don't. Some say, you know, I have just always wanted to be an whatever it is, and they're going to dive into it, and they're going to make it work, um, which, you know, is a big leap of faith. So again, this is where planning comes in. Um, I think it's probably a very good idea to have some experience in the, uh, you know, in the field that you're, that you're going to get into just because you know the lay of the land, you know the ropes are already a little bit. You know, maybe you were a waiter before you were, you know, a restaurant owner. Um, things like that can be really important. Yeah, well, yeah. restaurant owner and a waiter, uh, two, one thing, they're, another, yeah, they're, but they're the different, chef. But you learn, you know, they're different, but you learn a lot in your, you know, in your role um, as an employee. Uh, that's a really good place to, you know, start to learn. Uh, you can observe how the management works. Um, so, you know, it works. I've, se I've seen it happen, so. Okay, yeah. yeah, so they're giving me the two minute warning. Okay. <laughs> this is the football game, we're coming in two minutes. Two minutes, already, it does go fast. Yeah, right? it really yeah. goes fast, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, so people can contact you mm -hmm. at, what's the address? So startsmallthinkbig.org. Just think, you know, you're going to start small, but you have big plans. You're thinking big. <laughs> startsmallthinkbig.org. Dot org. Dot O R G, yes. And they're putting it right below you. Yep. And uh, so they can contact me um, through that website. My email address is on there, our phone number, uh, any of our staff members that you need to get in touch with. Um, we're pretty easily accessible. So please visit us if you're thinking about starting uh, a business or if, you're already s if you've already started and you know you need some help, give us a call. Uh, visit startsmallthinkbig.org. You can call our cell phone, our, uh, our office phone, 646-723-4055. One more time, a little bit slower. 646-723-4055. If you don't have a pen and a pencil, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you blew <laughs> they'll, it. They'll just think <laughs> about starting small and then thinking, thinking big, big, and then they'll find, us, they'll find us on the web. Okay. And for people that do not live in the New York City area mm -hmm. that might happen to see this on mm -hmm. the internet and you repurpose it. Yeah. There are lots of different, um, you know, government funded or privately funded um, resources out there. So the Small Business Administration is um, the federal, uh, the federal Small Business Administration. There are New York State Small Business Development Centers. Um, you can look them up on the web too. Alex, thanks. Always a pleasure, Gerald. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching in Harlem. And um, I appreciate you tuning in and, and watching my business shenanigans. Uh, hopefully you learned a good lesson here in terms of legal formalities. It's very important that you know what you're doing before you do anything. So just be careful and contact Start Small, Think Big.